32 Jahre ist der Alzer, hat im letzten Jahr seinen ersten PDC-Titel gewinnen können und ist die aktuelle Nummer 42 der Welt. Die Rede ist von Shaggy Joe Mernon. Shaggy nimmt es mit einem der konstantesten Spieler der letzten 15 Jahre auf. Er hat zig Proto-Turniere gewonnen. Er stand in neun Major-Finals und er kommt aus einer Region in England, die für die Stierzucht bekannt ist. Und deshalb trägt er den Spitznamen The Bull, Terry Jenkins. Auch an Tag Nummer 2 wird die Distanz Best of 11 Legs gespielt. Sechs Legs braucht man also, um in die nächste Runde, um in das Achtelfinale einzuziehen. Und der Caller dieser ersten Partie ist The Puppy, George Noble. Welcome to Sindelfingen in Germany for day two of the Happy Bet European Darts Grand Prix. It's the day when the big boys enter the fray. Here at the Glass Palast in Sindelfingen. We've got eight matches for you this afternoon, eight matches this evening. I want to tell you that Michael Van Gogh in the world number one or recent Euro Tour winner Mensor Solivic or Peter Snakebite Wright, multiple major finalists, they're not even top billing today. That goes to a game in the afternoon session where five-time world champion Raymond Van Barneveld playing his only Euro Tour event of the year, knowing he has to make the final this weekend if he's to make it to the European Championship. He's first. Game on. Yes, Barney is here, and Barney will take on Simon Whitlock in what, for me, looks like game of the day. But right now, the first of eight this afternoon, it is Terry Jenkins, the first seeded player in action against 100. Joe Mernon, a winner on the Pro Tour last year. I'm Dan Dawson, and Rob Malarkey is alongside me for what promises to be a phenomenal day of darts. Does indeed. Good morning, good afternoon, Dan, even. I'm losing track of time 60. already. <laughs> That's the measure of what's in store today. Yep, yeah, always special occasions the Saturday on the European Tour and particularly today when I turned up uh, around about an hour or so ago there was a huge crowd outside made my way through the security and then greeted by a cacophony of noise inside the arena as well just look over the shoulder of Terry Jenkins they're in the seats today as well it's a very very healthy turnout they're all in raucous mood and we are set fair for what should be an absolute belter of a day as you say Whitlock Barney meeting yet again this afternoon 140 Terry Jenkins a man who has reverted to type of late a semi-finalist in Austria made the last eight in Dusseldorf having failed to get beyond the last 16 in any of his previous six events but once again he could go no further than the third round in both Risa and in Mulheim last weekend as well 80 but Joe Mernham the man who came through his first round match yesterday against Dragatin Hall at 6-2. Not too many problems, but there might be one or two problems here for him. 121. You are you recall 123. Well, a couple of visits to see this off for Joe Mernon, the man from Bolton. Now, he doesn't need to go for it, and I don't think he will. Yeah, if he intended to go for the bullseye, he wouldn't even bothered looking at Terry Jenkins' score, though. If Jenkins not on a finish, he can just set it up and he'll have three darts in his hand looking double top to get the first leg on the board. Yeah, he six. was pretty effective on his Joe doubles yesterday against 40. Horvat. Nailing six out of ten. Are you sure the first leg? Joe Second leg, Terry, to throw the first time of asking. Game on. And Mernon leads 1-0. Yeah, he was very good, actually, against Dragutin Horvat. We thought it might be a tricky proposition for him, taking on Dragutin, who made the quarterfinals on the European Tour, on his debut on the European Tour, in fact, mm. this month. But he wasn't at that years. sort of level this weekend, Dragutin, and, and Joe, although his average dipped to 92 in the end, 60% in his doubles, and it was up in the high 90s for most of that game. It's a very accomplished performance, and if Joe can produce some of the form that took him to his surprise players' championship title last year, or the quarter-finals of the European Tour in Hildesheim at the start of last year, then he could have a little run here. And he has beaten Terry Jenkins on the European Tour this year. Did so in Gibraltar at this stage of the tournament, when it's 6-4. 60. 
And Terry's been playing some good darts this year as well. Made a final, only lost it in deciding leg to Gary Anderson. A couple of semi-finals, the one in Austria you mentioned. And a couple of quarter-finals as well. So it's not as if Terry's in any kind of a slump that he's taken mm. advantage of. Joe Mernon, a good win over Terry. And that's his second career win over Jenkins. Jenkins has three wins of their five meetings. So 95. although Terry is the seeded player, Joe quite fancy his chances here, I would think. Yeah, and also yesterday it was... Uh, a case of Murden avoiding an unwanted hat trick. He'd already lost to two host nation qualifiers mm. this year on the European tour. Max Hopp in Hamburg and then Zoran Lurchbacker in uh, the European Trophy in Ninety-nine. So beating Horvath ended that particular unwanted sequence. Average, does he say, 92.8 in the end. Well, if he can get into a position seven. here... Are you going 94? It might make life difficult for Jenkins, but Jenkins... Well, doesn't like that first up. 76 remaining. That's double eight then for Terry Jenkins to level it up. Well, 86. Joe, you record 128. You see some players going double double with 76 left there, but Jenkins, oh dear me. Jenkins hit the treble anyway, so he got his dart at the double. The 128 not going for Murray. So, so Terry eight. to level it up. Double four. Double two. Still double two. And there it is, oohs and ahs from Jenkins. the crowd here, it's a busy one, I've not got the official Rufus. figures, Game on. I would guess we're looking at over 2,000 here today, but that is a guess. 58. And we can have a few more for tonight's session as well, mm, which uh, so. starts at 7 o'clock this evening with Jelle Klassen against Johnny Clayton. A couple of other Dutchmen oh, involved tonight as well, Benito van der Pass and, of course, Michael van Gerwen. Yeah, looking forward to seeing Kim Hybrex in action as well. He's been superb over the last couple of weekends on the European Tour. Yeah. Peter Wright is always good value. Just a quick reference to the outright betting prior to the start of play today. Van Gerwen, as you might expect, overwhelming. Odds on favourites as Jenkins yeah. rattles in a 180. Terry Jenkins, 50 to 1. Peter Wright, the second favourite, 8 to 1 or so. And uh, the name you mentioned there, Kim Hybrix, 28 to 1. Where's our boy Mensor? Mensor Sulovic is 25 to 1. Mm. But he is seeded to meet 100. Van Gerwen in the quarterfinals. I think had he been in the other half of the draw, it might have been a, a very well, leader price. After winning his first one, then making the final the following week. 58. But so you require he has beaten Michael Van Gerwen on this stage, despite MVG mm. averaging 111 against him. So Jenkins isn't going to take out the 100, but he's going to leave himself pretty handy. 42 left, so 2 or 10. 2 it 60. is. Or why not have a double on Martin Schindler? Martin 400 Schindler, to one. 400 to 1. Alan what a weekend. Tabin, 400 to 1. Alan Tabin and Steve Beaton this afternoon. Terry require 40. Oh, retro darts here in single finger. Like going back to, I don't know, 2002 or something. Game short in a well, third. Terry Jenkins, Terry Jenkins has the first break. Four for leg, Terry to throw first. Game on. Best leg we've seen so far, that 14 darter. And Terry the ball, winner of this one, faces either Benito van der Pass, a man we've already mentioned, number six seed here in Sindelfingen this weekend, or 96. Christo Reyes, who looked pretty solid yesterday, and became Robert Marianovic with some excellent finishing. 81. Moon and the unseeded player, so he's had to come through the qualifiers to get here. Seeded players get here by right. And 43. That think, means the likes of Terry coming at this stage. I think we can mention Mernon's qualifying. Yeah, no, because Paul now Nicholson, our co-commentator, is over there and he can't hear us, but yeah. Mernon did 90. beat Paul Nicholson. 6-3. A 6-3 spanking for Nicholson. And he beat John Henderson as well. Yeah, 6-2. That's a couple of names he's done there. 85. Well, Terry Jenkins... Just the one European Tour final to date. That was in Gibraltar last year. He went down to Michael Van Gerwen in that. Pretty much in keeping with the nature of his career. One the, uh, nearly man of darts, or one of the nearly men of darts. He was uh, knocked out in the second round last year, though. He lost to one hundred six four 6-4 here. Terry Jenkins. Yeah, he played some good darts that weekend, Lee Evans. He's, I don't believe we've seen him on the Euro Tour since. No, we haven't. 
Well, 100, 100 for Mernon means he's left 130, and that's quite a nice little finish because single 20 and a treble 20 would leave him a dart at the ball's eye. Precarious. Mm. Get on with it, Terry. <laughs> Hmm. Seemed quite confident he was going to stay in the board. He was right to. Well, he's down to 76 again. Needs to find the treble. Doesn't find the treble. And... Well, he missed the board anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Halves is scored down to 65, and Jenkins looks at 76, and that's 15 scored, so 61 left. Is it 11 ball? It is, you know. Ooh, right on the wire there. Yeah, Murden chance to break back. He'll look at the bullseye again. 25 leaves tops. Great nice start. Just to break back for Joe Murden. Game shot and a full flare. And little one Joe he's giving it. Just a mini fist pump there. Two apiece. Break back straight away. Joe to throw first. That's Game uh, Scott Taylor. I believe. It is, you're right. Quick glance it was, yeah. Scott Taylor made his Euro Tour debut yesterday. Didn't go according to plan for Scott, but it's a learning experience. 96. Him. Yeah, another player knocked out yesterday making his debut. Robert Owen was uh, in the cab with me this morning as well, so he's here just to savor more 85. of the Euro Tour experience yeah, rather than dashing home. A few debutants, didn't we? And I know there's a, there's a lot of people here who are very impressed with Scott Dale making his debut on the Euro Tour. He took on Raymond van Barneveld and somehow managed to stick with him despite the early stages. It was, he was averaging 120. Yeah, it was a phenomenal display from Dale. Really caught the eye of Paul Nicholson as well. Just the one break of throw ultimately did it for uh, Barney. 140. Can he reproduce that kind of form this afternoon when he takes on the number 14 seed Simon Whitlock? I'll tell you what, Dale plays like that on the development tour, he'll absolutely breeze it. 59. Scary standard on the development tour nowadays. Nip and tuck this one, but Jenkins, yeah, 140 gets him down to a finish and puts himself in a position to get another break. He does need to get a break and stay ahead, Jenkins, if he's going to come through this, with Mernon throwing first in this match. 95, so he requires 136. Mm, anybody's leg, this one. Just wants to set this up. Mm, can he plot his way through in between those darts to leave double 18? Well, no, he can't. So he requires that 76 again. Yeah, for the third time today. Anyway, Mernon, though, well... Tops he wants then. Mm. 77. Terry requires 76. Oh, same route to glory. This time it's a single 20. 16 for Tops for a 3 2 lead and another break. Aim short and, and a that's fifth exactly leg. what's happened. Two Jenkins. Six leg Terry to throw first. Game on. Has been a busy month for. All of these guys involved in all the European tours. This is the third of a triple header. Three weekends consecutively, all in Germany. 100. And Terry extended that a little bit because earlier on this month he was doing exhibitions here in Germany. And despite 140. the woes of the plummeting pound, Terry has found a little way to exploit that and just do some exhibitions in Germany where now he's in about 30% more than he was before. <laughs> 99. Like, likes a few quid, does Terry. One hundred and twenty-five. Are we allowed to call him a wheeler dealer? Yeah, I think we are. I think the tungsten love joy. Forty-four. Well, no joy there for Jenkins. Big score here from Mernon will leave him handily placed a break back. It would be a successive break of throw and a ton 40 gets him down to 96. So Mernon potentially on an 11 dart leg here and he may well have a lot of breathing space anyway because <laughs> Jenkins is filling up that triple hey! one there. And there it is. How he celebrates it, why not? John, you require 96. Three triple ones from really. Terry the ball and it, as amusing as it may be, double eight. kind of hand the advantage Eight. to Mernon and he's going to come back and have another look at double eight that's the right bed Terry <laughs> oh, oh good grouping Terry oh, good grouping three treble ones followed by three treble twenties is it too little too late double four yes it is too little too late 14 dart reply from Joe Mernon to break back any montage of today's play has to feature that 
three triple ones. Seventh leg, Joe to three the triple twenty. First. Game off. Brilliant. Love that. Marvelous stuff. <laughs> Sixty. And you see, those averages, it's just crept up a little bit for Mernon with that 14 data, but it's been pretty level right the way through this one. And ultimately, that's reflected in the scoreline. Three apiece, Mernon still with a narrow advantage of throwing first, but then again, already he's under the gun in this leg, and after four consecutive breaks of throw, it doesn't inspire you with a great deal of confidence that Mernon is going to get three holds and see this one out. Yeah, both players have had success with one errant leg each. Jenkins 21 darts in the second. Easy five. Mernon 18 darts in the fourth, but apart from those two, it's been fairly solid stuff from both players. 140. Especially on the other player's throat. It's ebbing and flowing nicely, this one. 140. And I still have no idea who's going to win it. Wow, it's a very difficult one to call right now. Jenkins down to a finish, but Mernon, if he fills this up, or even a ton 40, yeah, gets him down to 64, and I think that just about puts him favourite for this leg. Yeah, this could be a pivotal moment. If we do have this almost elusive hold of throw, it may well give Mernon plenty of reason to believe. 90. Do you require 64? He was the outsider. He was 11 to 8 or so in the betting prior to the start of play. Jenkins was the odds-on favourite. Tops for Mernon. Doesn't 44. get it. And his finishing so yesterday against Fugutin Horvat was 60%. And that turned into what was a pretty comfortable win. But it's not quite at that level today. And it means that Jenkins is getting chances. Can he take this one? 12. No, he can't. Joe, yeah. you require 20. Well, that would have been for a fifth successive break of throw. Mernon still has work to do here, though, with double check. And, and we do have a hold of throw. A victory to throw first. Game and Mernon on. gets his nose in front at 4-3. Yeah, just two legs needed for Joe Mernon to knock out 100. Terry Jenkins. Last weekend, we saw 14 of the 16 seeded players through to the final day of action. Which was in stark contrast, of course, to what happened the week before. Exactly. And these European tours are incredibly unpredictable and it really does throw a spanner in the works when you got five-time world champion Raymond Van Barneveld coming through. He's not a seeded player as well. So Simon Whitlock, how's your luck? Yeah. If Barney plays like he did last night, certainly for large periods of his game he's got there last night, Simon Whitlock's going to have to roll back the years here and give us something that... We haven't seen from him on the Euro Tour for a little while. Yeah, it's not often you get a, a qualifier in a 32-man field as it is now who is fourth in the betting. 140! But that's the case with Barney, 16-1 to 1 prior to the start of play today. Oh, I never fourth in the betting. A bit of value maybe to be had. After all, he had that famous win over Van Gerwen in the World 99. Championship in the last 16. They'll have to beat him sooner or later. A run to the final, enough, we'd have thought. 81. For a place in the European Championship at the end of October. 81 for Jenkins means that he is on a two data. But Mernon's going to be on something handy as well. Oh, Look at that. What a setup shot. That is from Terry Joe Mernon leaving double 18. Terry, this might have to go. Needs. Oh, he's going double. He is going oh. double 19. Ooh, 57. Well. Joe, you require 36. Nearly find that last one into the treble, Terry Jenkins. Double nine for five three. Massive dart this. Joe Mernon doesn't 18. find the target. What a setup so shot from Mernon. He doesn't 40. take advantage. Jenkins for a level game at four all. And he's there it is. And is Sorry, that Jenkins. is that the chance that Nine Joe Mernon needed? Is he going to get one as good as that? Well, three missed darts there at double eighteen and double nine. And suddenly Mernon has been stopped in his tracks. He just 60. has to put that bed behind him now. And or put that uh, leg behind him now and focus on the here and now. It's now effectively a best of three encounter. 60. And Jenkins does have to find a break. Which he's done twice today already. Well, he has. But he's just not been able to consolidate that break of throw. By the way, we've just had Alan Norris and Nathan Aspinall warming up on the practice board alongside the commentary area. They're on stage next. 87. Alan Norris, long overdue a win on the European Tour. He's had a torrid time of it of late, but back to this one. 
100. And Mernon just trying to establish a bit of a cushion here on Jenkins. Yeah. Jenkins might be in the mood for something big here. Oh, isn't oh. he just... Isn't he just... Mernon has to respond. Needed that. He's down to a finish first on his throw. Terry needs to back up that 180 with something solid here. Back up to the trouble 20, I would think. Yeah. 82. Now, Do you recall 101, 101 one. plays 92. Another big moment in this game. 81 left. Treble 19 for double 12. Doesn't get the treble. Jenkins looking at 92. 69. Now, does he go treble 20 or does he go for the bullseye? 92. If he goes for the bullseye, he should guarantee himself a dart at least at the ball. But he's got the treble. Two darts at double 16 for 5-4. Jenkins, what a time to break this would be. 76. Two missed darts Yo, for Terry the ball. 32. Yeah, some way outside and then some way inside. Joe Mernon. He wants he double 16. Ninth leg, and Mernon's now one away. Leg, Terry, to throw fast. Game oh. on. Terrific encounter to kickstart the day here. Oh. And Terry Jenkins kickstarting the 10th leg in spectacular style as well with a ton 80. Wouldn't put it past Joe here. 100. Well first game of the day and it looks as if we may be going to a last leg decider and it's a game where both men whoever wins the loser's going to come off thinking I had my chances there if I've just hit one or two more doubles I could have buried this game a little bit earlier on 140. Jenkins racing towards this 10th leg absolutely flying towards it he would still need to break in the decider to claim the win 6-5. Benito van der Passel, Christo Reyes awaits the winner of this one. And the sort of match, exactly the sort of match that warrants a, a deciding leg. Terry, you require 47. It's been that sort of game. So, well, that's it for treble. That's it for treble seven. So, will he go straight for double 13? He will. He shows and and leg. Sorry, Jenkins. It's the only way to 11, go. Treble leg, seven, Joe double 13. First. Game on. 11 data, though. It doesn't matter how unorthodox your finishing might be. Do it in 11 darts, go any way you like. And now this is a huge, 84. huge leg for Joe Mernon. Can he record a second Euro Tour win over Terry Jenkins this year? He did it at this stage in Gibraltar earlier on in the year to book his place in the last 16. That's the furthest he's gone on the 32. European Tour this year. He did have a quarter-final in Hildesheim some time ago now. But it could turn out to be a significant weekend for Joe Mernon if he can get over the line. Terry Jenkins starts poorly. Mernon desperate for another treble. Gets another treble. Advantage Mernon. Definitely so. Terry needs a ton 40 plus here. Well, ton 40 will do. 100. Might not be enough. Oh, it's almost 100 points the lead. Joe Mernon, you would think, is going to get match darts. Nobody's had a match dart as yet. But Mernon is down to a finish after nine, and he can't ask much more of himself than that in a deciding leg against the number 11 seed, Terry Jenkins, the nine-time major finalist. 60. Man who's won Joe five PDC titles. He nearly won his sixth earlier this year, but was beaten in a deciding leg by the world champion Gary Anderson. But Mernon might be about to see this off need of the treble 19, but he'll check it up perfectly. Three match darts, minimum a double top for Joe Mernon. And all Terry can do here is just post a bigger tally as he can and it's not going to be a big tally it's Joe simply Uruguay not enough 40. Joe Mernon has all the time in the world here three darts at double 20 two more at double 20 at this visit okay, and he sure. only needs one of them and, the match, and Joe, Joe Mernon has eliminated Terry Jenkins in the second round it's another second round exit here in Sindelfingen for the ball and for Joe Mernon it's another step in the right direction Looking to emulate what he did in Gibraltar by making the last 16, he's done precisely that. He will be involved in the business end of the European Darts Grand Prix. Congratulations to Shaggy, but Jenkins won't be involved any longer. Alan Morris and Nathan Aspinall on the way next for you. Is damit the first player who has the Achtelfinal erreicht. Shaggy had im last year a Viertelfinale gespielt. Joe, congratulations. It was a close one. Good win against Terry.
Yeah, brilliant. I mean, Terry, the he's fantastic. He's told me he don't even practice anymore, so imagine what he's like when he does. <laughs> Is it difficult to play the first match of the day because it's early? It's it's, it's one o'clock. It's always difficult, but you should be used to it by now, you know, and get ready for everything. And that's what I do. Okay. See you tomorrow again. Thank you very much. Joe Vernon, der ist sehr, sehr glücklich.